Hi guys and welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Stockport today on the game page of the game against Marseille uh, because of course that's what we're doing today double live com two games against Marseille I think it's doable but I think this is going to be a tougher task than RB Leipzig um, although to be fair we've, we've not had the best luck in terms of draws but when you look at the other teams in here None of the Stuttgart, then again, they've been champions of the German League. Galatasaray, maybe. Celta Vigo. Nice. Ajax. There's a few teams in here that I would have maybe preferred to draw. But, you know, we, we really need to get through this just so the board will be happy with our achievement here. Uh, although we did reach that League Cup final. So hopefully they'll take that into account. Now, it's Sunday. I think, which means it's Regen Sunday. And of course, if you want to participate in Regen Sunday, you've got any Regens for me, I'm looking out for cool nationalities of players that are half decent, just awesome players, awesome names, you know the stuff, then head over to the Discord, link in the description. There's a whole channel just for Regens and stuff. So be sure to go check that out and add your own in too. So here's what we've got for you today. Paolo Marcello, who is an American uh, playing for New York Red Bull, but this guy... 17 years old to be that good. This guy's the, the great white hope of American football. And I mean the round kind. Next up, Louis Dantas, who, well, I mean, 19 years old, Portuguese, and already that good. I mean, that guy is sensational. To, to already be five and a half stars at 19, obviously, it depends on your team, but still. Um, how much was he? Was he free? Probably. I don't know. I think I remember reading that he was free as well, which makes it even better. Next up, Reese Daly, who basically, uh, this guy sold Reese Daly to West Ham United, put a clause in the contract um, for 50% of the next sale fee, and then as he, a couple of years later, West Ham got relegated, and he was able to buy the guy back for him and got this guy for £11 million in the end, uh, which is a bloody good deal, so well done you. Next up is Julian, who, now this is a cool one. Apparently he was a Spanish region that came through the youth academy of Western Supermare, which is kind of cool. You do get that sometimes, particularly, I think, like, for example, I get some Danish regens purely because of my nationality in the game. Uh, and that definitely happened with B67 too, as we got a couple of Brazilians. So uh, don't ask me how you got the Spaniard, though. That's just maybe pure randomness. And finally, Philimoni Kautoga. Now, he's not amazing as a player, but the guy pointed out, this guy has joint New Zealand and Fijian nationality. And a Fijian player is pretty damn obscure, so I had to include it. Uh, you know I love an obscure one. So if you've got any more of those, drop those into the Discord now. So we've had a couple of games off camera, which we're going to quickly go over now. It's still something still feels sticky, and I don't know why. I made some changes before the Brighton game, and I think it's made an effect, but we'll talk about that in a sec. We dropped points away at Huddersfield. It was disappointing. It really, really was. Um, <sighs> Liam Miller gave us the lead after 12, uh, 29 minutes from the penalty spot, and we were okay in this game. Like As you can see, we we're probably still shading this as the better side, but it's the fact that for their goal, Patrick Roberts had to win a header. Patrick Roberts is notoriously... Remember my day back in the day on Pompey and that? I would complain constantly about Patrick Roberts being able to win headers against my players. Now, I can't remember exactly how tall he is, um, but he ain't... Five foot six, right? He wins a header against Nos, who is six... He's got a full foot over him. And it disappointed the crap out of me because he flicks it on and then running onto it was Barry Shields to level things up for Huddersfield. And that's what cost us a point in this... Uh, cost us two points in this match. Very, very disappointing. Uh, thankfully, I think Spurs lost to Newcastle on the same day. So we actually kind of gained... It's just... We've got to worry about, you know... Huddersfield were eighth in the league, I suppose. But it's just frustrating to concede a goal like that. And to be fair, ours was a penalty. We missed some chances in this game. It's a bit frustrating, but we move on. And then it came to Brighton. Now, this was a weird one. Now, as you can see, they still managed to score a goal because, of course, uh, from an indirect free kick because of course the ball was whipped in and for some reason they had five players unmarked at the back post because of the free kick but why that's not in my free kick setup how does the ai get it to lump all four all five players made a back post run but i can only set one player to do that in my tactics so how can they do it and i can't very frustrating and i don't know how to defend that because if it's not in the attacking tactics it the actual defense of it isn't seemingly in the defensive side of the tactics. So it's really difficult to stop them from doing that. And that's where the, the vast majority of those indirect free kick goals come from. Ball lumped to the back post and like six players make a run there and you can't stop them. Um, I'd like to figure out how to do that. That would be ideal. But we were pretty good in this game. A Pedro penalty. He got another one a few minutes later on the break, which was nice. A Quaibu scored a free kick for us, which was nice. And then Patrick Pence's own goal. Morgan Roussel had a header from a corner, which deflected off the post, hit the keeper and went in. We deserved the win. Let's face it. A 4-1 thumping of Brighton. But on another day, this still could have easily been a one-all draw like the Huddersfield game. Thankfully, we got away with it a bit more in this game. Um, ETS was fantastic yet again off the bench. Slowy and Bednar had to go off injured. Um, Bednar, please stop getting injured every game you play. He comes back, he gets injured again. And it's not like I'm like rushing him back in. Um, sometimes I am. But he was fully fit again by the time this game came around. Bam. Although, thankfully, it was only one of those ones that he could run off. So we're all right. 
But the change I made was to turn off walk work ball to the box from the beginning. Because I find that I often end up turning that off in the middle of games anyway. So I'd rather start with it off. Allow us to go out there and learn how to play like that. And if we are starting to get a load of shots off target, then I can turn it on to sort of kill games off and work on the possession. That's what I did here. I turned it back on later in the game to hold on to the ball a bit more and just try and, you know, create a bit more intricate chances when we already had the lead but i think it's a good opportunity the other thing i did was turn off pedro of shooting more often i could i thought i didn't have that on i thought i he used to have shoot less often on but that was causing him to get too close to the goal but i think for whatever reason i'd somehow i don't know where i did this turned it on to shoot more often and it meant that he was taking the shots too early and i want that sweet spot we're really having to fine tune things to get the best out of pedro and today obviously it was only a pen but the second one was a prime example of him just taking a touch setting himself and scoring which was nice right now just quickly, here's what the league looks like. We're into second place at the moment, 15 points behind Chelsea, because of course we are. We're above Man United, but they do have a game in hand, so they could draw level with us after that. Uh, we have moved now four points clear of Liverpool, who have had a couple of results against some of the tougher sides, to be fair, like Chelsea, I think. Um, Spurs, again, dropped points against Newcastle, and they were, were a goal down to Palace, but put, turned it around with two goals. Um, so they are now seven points behind us, but we do have a game in hand on them as well, which is very nice, and that can push that to 10 points. And I think we're getting close to sewing up Champions League football, just a few more victories i think we do have an arsenal game coming up in between so that's going to be tough as arsenal do have uh, two games in hand on spurs but even if they were to win both of those they'd only draw level with spurs on points so they'd still be at the very most at uh, very minimum seven points behind us as at the moment they are 13 points and if we beat arsenal that will probably take them out of the champions league race entirely and that's pretty damn nice um now we're missing a couple of players they're missing a lot of players it would seem so that could potentially help us rudy garcia the manager we're just going to do our best. They're playing a normal looking system from what I can see from the scouting report. So hopefully they'll continue that. But we'll just go in here now. Okay, yeah, that's fine. So Bruma, Trinka, Sola. Um, oh, Jordan Amavi. Nathan Arke. Okay, interesting. So Lopez is the man to go after in the midfield. The others will all take care of themselves once we set this up like that. So unfortunately, injury risk is kind of high on everyone at the moment because we've literally got no choice. Thankfully, Slowey's injury wasn't severe enough. And that's actually kind of good. I guess he's not as bad as injured as I thought. It's basically, and Camille Bednar as well as you can see. So about as strong a team as we're possibly able to field. Baisa, Pedro, Abasolo, Melo, Slawi, Bofa, Bednar, Roussel, Makengo, and Duran. And the key thing about this, you just can see this, all the links are there. The players have built up the links. This is about as strong a team as we're possibly able to fulfill, and I'm glad of that. So I think off the bench, we're going to have ETS, Hume, uh, Akwebu, Miller, uh, Nos, Lazaro, and Gadais. With the home game first, we're going to go out there and be positive and try from the start, just try and have a crack at this, you know? Let's, let's do this. I don't know what to expect. I want to see us put in a fight, though. But I'm certainly not expecting anything from us against Arsenal, that is for sure. Wilson generally goes to Roussel because he's got that passing ability to get us out of trouble at, at times. Slowey picks it up. That's better. Have a solo. It's nice to have this full strength back. We need Bicer to be on form today. Can he slip him in? He d oh, he nearly. He could go alone. He's at the bar. Oh, my God. We've had some... Slowey's now taking a knock again. My goodness, man. Can you not stay fit for more than one game? Equabo is coming in for him. Not getting a lot of shots. Oh, no. No. Ooh, Wilson with the big save. Maybe slightly more direct passing could work for... Oh, here we go. Bice is in. One touch. Can he finish? No, of course he bloody can't. Of course. I need a new striker next year. I'm sorry. I like Joseph Bice, but he misses way too many of these one-on-ones. So we're going to switch it back on here. I'm also going to up the passing a little bit to just give us some more options because they're not playing those simple passes out to the flanks enough. Might also counter-press them. It feels like the type of game where we could get away with that. Go on, get in there. That's fine. Lovely. Ooh, nice ball. Pedro, can he square it for someone? Ball across. Baisa, yes! Thank you, Joseph. You've done your job. 16th goal of the season. Stockport 1, Marseille 0. Sometimes not working it into the box will work, but at least we had a first half where we, were, we weren't just completely dead. We were still creating stuff. Pedro, and some of those will go in. Sometimes you need to be a bit more precise with it. And now we have the lead. We're going to work it into the box and just control this match now. Bicep. Oh, look at the space out wide. He's going to have to use Abasolo, though. Unless he could dig a pass out to the back post from somebody. He could go all alone. Pedro's in, and it's 2-0. That's what we really needed. Pedro's goal, Abasolo's assist. 2-0 up at home to Marseille. Right, clean sheet now is absolutely crucial. Just sticking on positive, keeping things nice, trying to catch them on the break where we can. This is the, Nobody closes down Abasolo. Pedro makes his run, gets into the right position this time, finishes in it off, and that is 2-0. That is very nice. I want to bring on John Hume soon win some extra headers and it's a penalty to us pedro can take it oh yes come on come on pedders if he scores this i feel like we're in really good shape come on pedro do me proud son 
And he scored it! Stockport 3, Marseille 0, Pedro's 23rd of the season. Now we just need to see the rest of this game out. And we might even be able to rest players for the second leg if we can see this out at 3-0. 3-1, there's still hope. If we win this game 3-0, I cannot see us not going through. But there's still a long way. So it's getting a bit dangerous here, guys. Don't need to be so fast with it. Abasolo, can he find Pedro again? He can! Oh! Yeah! <laughs> what a goal! Stockport 4, Marseille 0. Pedro with the... Is that a hat trick for Pedro on the night? Oh my god. What about this? I, how is this not his assist from Abasolo? Abasolo again driving at them. Sees the run. Pedro takes it round the goalkeeper. And then... So how is that Pedro's goal? Does the defender tackle Pedro's foot into the ball? <laughs> Alright. Absolutely flawless performance in the second half. Pedro was the king. Um, everybody else out there was phenomenal. We are going through to the next one. We're getting to the quarterfinals, lads. 4-0 over Marseille. A hat-trick from Pedro in nine minutes. A nine-minute hat-trick from Pedro. Josef Beiser with a goal as well. We could have had more. Beiser went through in the first half. I think this new approach of starting off with a bit more free-flowing and then sort of trying to be a bit more creative later in the game uh, seems to work a bit more as it sort of softens teams up a little bit. Maybe it's just this one game, but I'm super pleased with that. Now, Arsenal off camera and then on to the second leg where we might play a couple of the youngsters. We'll see. Maybe we can take this into Arsenal and do something in that game too. So, we've had a youth intake. I totally forgot that was going to be a thing. Don't worry, we'll quickly talk about the Arsenal game in a minute. But first, youth intake. Now, We've got every reason to be excited by Frank Platt Beach. That, that is a name right there, FPB, who has the potential to be one of the most gifted players to come through the youth and ranks at Stockport in recent years. Okay, notable influence on Dean Cherry and Steve Hurst. Come on, give me something good, please. Oh. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> oh, um, okay. Got me all excited there and, um... Uh, this is a bit iffy, really, isn't it? Um, so, okay, there's Eddie Schumacher, who's a target man striker, who's six foot tall. Someone's I mean, finishing is seven. What about this Frank Platt Beach guy he was banging on about? Eight, 14 marking is pretty solid. He's six foot tall, four balance, and he argues with officials. I, I don't see him being a world beater somehow. Um... So a one-off camera game was away at Arsenal at the, Eti uh, the Etihad, at the Emirates. It was unfortunate. I think we probably deserved a draw out of this. I know they had more shots, but it was mostly shooting from range. They created one chance in the entire game. So did we, in fairness, uh, as Nos put a ball over the top and Bicer was through on goal. Well, well, you know what happened. He missed. Of course he missed. Um, and that should, I probably think a one-all draw would have been fair based on that. The goal they scored was annoying because th they had the ball. We were all set and he just ran around the back of our defence and put it in the net. It was a bit frustrating that we didn't track the run better. Um, and a point would have been really useful just to keep Arsenal out of the battle for Champions League, really, and just give us one more point. Okay, so we're going to obviously have to move some stuff around. That's fine. Uh, unfortunately, oh God, that's a problem, isn't it? Both are suspended. Dyer's injured. Dendonka can't play. I'll tell you what, it's just as well that we're falling up because that could have been a real problem. Playing a DM here, uh, sorry, a defensive, a, a centre back here probably isn't the worst thing in the world anyway because he's already going to be thinking about that kind of stuff. That'll probably do. Gary Lazaro, Akwebu, Miller, Dimitrov, Davidson, and of course, John Hume. Now, we go up there, we'll have some fun, see if we can't get ourselves... If we score a goal, this is over. Not that it isn't already, but if we were to score a goal here, it would be dead in the water. They'd need to win, what, 6-1 if we score? So let's try and do that. It's also just occurred to me that as of this point right now, we have won nine, all nine Europa League games that we've participated in. Every single game. Wow. They could have done a lot better there if he provided a good cross for his striker. Oh, come on! There's two of you on either side of this. Like, one of you two should be blocking this cross. And at the far post, there's two of them, and somehow neither of them tries to win the ball. Ridiculous. Come on! You're better than that. Okay, half-time, 1-0 to Marseille. Fair enough, really. Um, Bit annoyed that we couldn't prevent the goal, but that's fine. I do want to make a couple of slight tweaks. Oh, he's lost it, and I think he's hurt himself in the process. Can this be our moment? Durand, Bicer, can he square it? He doesn't need to. Puts in Every time I criticise him during these games, he does send, end up coming up with something. We're level on the night, and we're going through as if we didn't already know. That's unfortunate, really. It's all down to Bruma losing the ball here. Maybe we should have kicked it out, but we're not sportsmen. Like, Durand does really well. It's a lovely touch from Bicer to take it round his man. Simple first-time finish. Pedro was open. He didn't need him. It's one all here, and now we're heading through. Cut inside. Cut inside again. Trinker, enough players back there, no, and they've scored, because we let them do it again. Uh, it's 2-1 to Marseille on the night. It's a bit disappointing, really, when you consider it, but uh, they've done really well. It's a good little run from Sola, holds the ball up nicely, whops it around the corner for Trinker, and nobody trapped the run. He gets in front of Makengo, and it is 2-1 to Marseille. Disappointing, but what can you do? Bednar picks it up. 
Oh, I don't know what he's doing there. That is so pointless. Everybody in your positions. Oh, God. Zinchenko's through. And they scored another one. That's so stupid. Why? There's no reason for Bednar to just lump that down the field aimlessly. He's got players around him. Because no one's near him. And as a result, we've conceded a goal here because nobody could get back in the right positions. Makengo does not do well against Zinchenko there either. And now it's another goal for Marseille. They're still not going to win the match, but it's very frustrating. Lopez. Oh, my Lord. They've got another. Are you joking? Come on. They, they really have switched off in this match, it's fair to say. Like, this is just bad play in general. Like, you win the first header and somehow he's able to whip up. Look at that. It's a first time ball to the back post and Trinker's completely left alone there. Don't hold your hands up, mate. You've been woeful. Bednar has not been good today. He's responsible, in my mind, for both the third and fourth goals that they've scored. Um, this game was all looking really sewn up, and I'm still happy to go through, of course, but to lose 4-1 like that is piss poor. Bednar particularly bad uh, in that match. Um, but there you go. We are through to the next round. To lose 4-1, though, it's not going to do well for the morale. You know, it was all looking so fine coming with, like, 12 minutes to go. But there you go. It doesn't matter. We're through. Here we go. So here's who's left. Arsenal, Dortmund, Liverpool, Celta Vigo, Leicester, Nice, and Stuttgart. I would like any of the ones on the right and none of the ones on the left. That's the plan anyway. Because let's, we might as well watch it. In for a penny. Leicester will play. Dortmund. Okay. Liverpool will play. Please not Liverpool. Arsenal. Oh, that's great for us. Any of the rest. Any of these. Nice will play Celta Vigo. So we're going to play against Stuttgart in the quarterfinals of the Europa League. Oh no. John Villa is playing for them. The guy I've tried to sign in the last three years in a row. Oh, if he scores goals against us, which he will because he's amazing, I just want to show you. I don't know if I've ever actually shown you this guy. This is the guy I've been after for years. Um, I, I just, please, no. Anyway, next episode, I assume, is going to be those games. Uh, yes. Uh, wait. Yeah, yeah, it will be. Uh, so it's going to be a few games off camera, actually. Four, in fact. That's quite a break, in fact. We're not coming back till April, nearly. Uh, so four matches off camera up next. We've got Chelsea, West Ham, Villa and Spurs. West Ham and Villa are crucial and they're both at home. I think we win both of those. And we're in a really good place. Going to Spurs as well. That could be really, really important. But then we're coming back for Stuttgart in the, the Europa League quarterfinals. So you've got that to look forward to. Oh, holy hell. Right. And after that, how many league games left? Our running isn't too bad, actually, with Palace, Southampton and Leicester uh, finishing things off. So I, I, and even, frankly, Manchester City at home. I think we're going to do it top four, but I want to see how far we can go in the Europa League. Let me know how far you think we're going to go. I genuinely think a semi is a reasonable expectation based on the way we played. Although that 4-1 defeat does concern me a little bit. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this, and I hope you have, drop a like on the video. That would be spectacular. And if you are new to the channel, subscribe. That'd be awesome as well. And I will see you guys in the next episode for a double live come again. Stuttgart Europa League fighting in the Premier League as well. Good God. Let's get into this. Anyway, I'll see you guys soon. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.